All right, all you chemistry kids, here we go with acids and bases part two. Uh, today we're going to go through some of the stuff that's a little bit more complicated because it takes a little bit more thought with a calculator. It's got a little bit more math, but I know you guys can do it. All right, so here we go. First thing to remember is that I can't, there we go. First thing to remember is that there's these things called conjugate pairs. We talked a little bit about that in the last section, uh, so we need to remember what a conjugate pair is. Conjugate pairs differ by one hydrogen ion, one H+. Literally, the only difference between them is one H+. So if we were to try to identify some from the acid that would be given, what is the conjugate base that goes with it? So here's four acids, all right? Hydrofluoric acid, nitric acid, phosphoric acid, and oxalic acid. So these four are the acid. What is the conjugate base that goes with them? So since everything differs by one H+, plus, acids have one more H than the bases have. So here's what we need to know. We need to take the H off of the acid to make its conjugate base. HF becomes F-. minus. Notice we took away the H and the plus charge. Everything should drop by charge by one. Nitric acid, HNO3, is going to become... NO3 minus, hopefully this is starting to make sense, H3PO4, we drop one of the H's and the charge by one, it's going to be H2PO4 with a, whoops, I screwed up, not minus two, it's still just a minus one, so I can't fix that on the fly, we're just going to cross it out, it is not minus two, that is my error, I was thinking of something else when I typed it, my mistake, okay, so it's H2PO4 with a minus charge, now H2C2O4 is going to be HC2O4 with a minus one charge. Notice one H is the difference between all those. That's conjugate pairs, all right? That's the first thing. Now, as we move on, what we need to look at is how to come up with pH. pH, again, measures whether something is acidic or if it's basic. If the pH is from zero to seven, we call it an acid. If the pH is from seven to 14, it is a base. And if the pH is seven, it's neutral, all right? How do we go about coming up with those numbers? Well, this is a logarithmic function, all right? So logs, you may have learned a little bit about in your algebra class. Hopefully it was before we went on to distance learning because this is not super simple to learn all by yourselves and trying to figure stuff out. So these values are based on a logarithmic calculation. We are doing what's called the base 10 log, all right? Base 10. On your calculator, let's see if I can put it up here where you can see it. You have all these different buttons, right? See this one right over here, wrong finger, right here called log, right there. Not LN, that's natural log. L-O-G, log, that's the 10, base 10 log. All right, that's the button we're looking for on our calculator. We need to take the log of a value. To find the pH, it's the negative log of the hydrogen ion's concentration. The negative log of the hydrogen ion's concentration. So if they tell me the molarity of the hydrogen ion is this value, you take the log of the hydrogen ion concentration and then you make it positive. Notice this little line right here. This is a negative sign, right? So when we take the log of H+, it's going to give us a negative value most of the time. In order to have a proper pH, we have to take that negative value and make it positive. So that's what the negative sign does, is it just makes it positive. If you type in the value of whatever the H concentration is, take its log, it's going to give you a negative number, make it positive. All right, that's literally all there is to it. One other thing here, these little square brackets that you see, the square brackets mean the concentration of whatever is inside of those brackets. So when we put H plus inside of square brackets, we're saying the concentration of the hydrogen ion. If we put OH inside of those brackets, we would be saying the concentration of the hydroxide ion. All right. So a couple other things here. This is just part of the math behind what's happening. pH plus pOH will always equal 14 for a given solution. So if I know that my lemonade has a pH of 3, it has a pOH of 11. If my base, my uh, whatever you want to call your drain cleaner, has a pH of 12.5, then the pOH is 1.5. The sum of pH plus pOH has to equal 14. 
That shouldn't be hard. pH plus pOH is 14. You will see questions asking you to find the pH from the pOH, find the pOH from the pH, and then some other things. When you multiply the hydrogen ion concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration, you will always, always, always get this number. Again, if we weren't doing distance learning, if I was in class and we could go over this like 15 times together, I would show you how to do this. Otherwise, I'm, it's going to get muddled and you're going to go, I don't understand. If you really, really, really think you need to understand how to do this, feel free to go on to Kim Academy, C-H-E-M Academy. Um, Mr. Millings used to be a teacher at Quartz Hill. He made a bunch of videos. He's got a good one about pH and pOH. You can go on to Khan Academy, K-H-A-N, Khan Academy. Look up acids and bases there. You can go on a Crash Course on YouTube. You can find Tyler DeWitt videos. Anything and everything that you can look at, there are plenty of ways to figure this out. But hydrogen ion, this H plus hydrogen ion times the OH minus ion is always going to equal 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. Hydrogen ion times hydroxide ion equals 1 times 10 to the negative 14th for a given solution of aqueous substance. All right. So all that really means is mathematically, if I know one of any of these things, if I know pH, if I know pOH, if I know H plus, if I know OH minus, here, let's do that differently. If I know pH, if I know pOH, if I know H plus or OH minus, if I know any one of those four, I can solve for all of the others. Because if I know the concentration of H plus, if I know this one, then I can find the pH. If I know this one, I can find the OH by doing algebra to solve for 1 times 10 to the negative 14. If I know the pH, I can find the pOH. All right? These shouldn't start to be, like, I don't know how to say it. It shouldn't be the most ridiculously hard thing ever. It's just math, and I know a lot of you really struggle with that. So to solve for these H plus or OH minus, you have to use algebra. I've tried to break it down on the screen. It's not the same as me writing it because typing is like, it's different, but let's just go through this way. If we know that the hydrogen ion concentration is 4.0 times 10 to the negative fifth, what is the concentration of the hydroxide ion? The secondary question is what is its pH? So the first thing, one times 10 to the negative 14th is what we will get when I multiply H plus times OH minus. So if I plug in what I know, 1 times 10 to the negative 14th equals 4 times 10 to the negative 5th times OH minus. What do I need to do in algebra to get that all by itself? Well, I'm going to divide both sides. So I'm going to take this value and I'm going to divide both sides, right? Divide by 4 times 10 to the negative 5th. Okay, if I do that, I'm going to end up with a number on my calculator. You have to know how to enter it in your calculator, okay? If you do this, you end up with, da, 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 da. oh, divide by OH minus to get it by itself, and you get 2.5 times 10 to the negative 10th. If you push buttons on your calculator and you do not get that number, you are doing something wrong. You need to learn how to put it in scientific notation the right way. Again, on my calculator, I can show you on this one, it's kind of a small little screen here, but on mine, I push the EXP button down here at the bottom, right? So I'm going to go here, I'll type the numbers, see if I can do this. I'm going to go 1.0 times 10 to the negative, I'm going the wrong way, 10 to the negative 14 divided by 4.0 times 10 to the negative, of course I pushed the wrong button both times. Let's try that again. 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 4.0 times 10 to the negative fifth. And I push equals. And look at that. 2.5 times 10 to the negative 10th. Okay? If you don't use that sign, that EXP or EE, whatever button you're doing, if you mul push the multiply button, you're going to get the wrong answer most of the time. So now, that was finding the concentration of the OH minus. The secondary question was, what is the pH of the solution, right? So to find the pH, we take the negative log of that value. So I'm going to take the negative log of, I'm going to take the negative log of this value, the 4 times 10 to the negative fifth. 
And when I push that in my calculator, if I put 4.0 times 10 to the negative fifth and take the log, it gives me negative 4.397. Okay, 4.4, negative 4.4. But this negative sign makes it positive. The pH is always going to be positive in our class. Okay, so to do all of those things, that should be what you should be able to do. Um, let's go through one more. If the concentration of the hydrogen ion is found to be 1 times 10 to the negative third, find the pH. This is pretty simple. You take the negative log of 1.0 times 10 to the negative third. The negative log is how you're going to do this. So again, different calculators have different button pushing. So what you have to do is figure out how do you, does your calculator work to take the log of a value. Okay. The other thing is you could always convert any of these scientific notation numbers back to standard notation and punch those in and then take the log of that number. So depending on how your calculator takes the log of a value is what you have to worry about doing. All right. So if I were to take the negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative third, the negative log of 0 0.001, I get 3. There it is. The answer should be 3. Okay. So on the next assignment that you have on Moodle, there are calculations and it basically means that you have to know how to push the buttons right okay there's going to be a video i hope if i can figure out how to do it um, of me holding like i'll get my daughters or somebody to hold a video camera or i'll hold it in one hand and my calculator in the other i don't know i'll figure something out and i will show you how to push buttons on two different types of calculators because that's what i have i have this calculator right and then I have my cell phone, which is what a lot of you have, and I could show you my cell phone calculator, and those are the two that I will show you how to do it on, right? If you have an iPhone, it'll be simple. Those of you that don't, um, hopefully you can get one that is similar to either this one or similar to an iPhone. I don't know anything about the Droid calculators, all right? So there's an assignment on Moodle. It is called Acids and Bases number two. You should have it completed by the end of the day next Friday. Everything else is still open. There was an assignment last week that was due on the 24th that was in Google Classroom. Like I know that's confusing to some of you because we don't use Google Classroom a lot. But that Google Classroom, sorry, I know it's that Google Classroom assignment was an assignment. I've had 35 people out of 190 people turn it in. That's not okay. All right, you guys need to be continuing to be working. I am supposed to be checking when you are participating and not participating. When you are not participating, that is a bad thing. All right. So the assignment on Moodle is called Acids and Bases. You've watched this video that took a little over 12, maybe 13 minutes. You have an assignment that's 20 questions called Acids and Bases number two. All of that should not take you more than two hours, right? Some of you, many of you, have a lot of other assignments to make up. You may have seen the email last week from the district office. That message said that your grade for the third quarter cannot go down. It can only go up. So those of you that have D's and C's, you need to do all of your makeup work. Those of you that have F's, you definitely need to do a lot of work. You need to dig yourself out of this hole that you've made. Nothing is going to hurt your grade, but only help it. Anything that is a zero, any new score that goes in is going to help your grade. You must, 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 must get caught up, all right? Go back into Moodle. Try all of those assignments. If there's th things that you're lost on, check Power Teacher and there, or on Power School. There is a way to get to tutoring. You need to go and figure out how to do these things and get stuff done. It is important for your chemistry grade, all right? So if you know somebody that hasn't been doing any chemistry, that they haven't been checking the videos, they haven't been doing stuff, give them a little call. Tell them, hey, you need to get some work done. Um, Mr. Martin has put stuff up there to help us out. I'm doing everything I can to try to help you guys get to the point where you can learn a little bit of chemistry here at the end of the year and we can help you as you move forward. All right. Hope you're all doing well. Again, I'm on Google Classroom or sorry, Google Meet Friday morning from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. I'm also on Google Meet on Tuesdays from 10 a.m. till noon. All right. Anytime you email me, I try to get back to you that same day. If you haven't gotten a response about something uh, that's a real question, let me know. I will be updating Moodle scores here in the next couple of hours, uh, either Friday or Friday evening, something like that. So do everything that you can. Get caught up. I um, look forward to hearing from you if I haven't heard from you. Some of you, if you haven't done anything all semester or ever since distance learning started, if you'll just shoot me an email and tell me, yeah, I know I didn't do anything. I'm sorry, Mr. Martin. I 
I'm struggling or I'm, I'm having a hard rough go of it or something, let me know that you're okay so that I can do something about that. All right. Hope you guys are well. Take care. We will see you very, very soon.